this is JJ from Once Somerville. Thanks so much for being here. It's great to see you. What you're about to enjoy is some special content created just for you by the Once family. We appreciate the time that the artists have given and we've put a link to their tip jar in the comments below. We've also put a link there to our GoFundMe. This is one of the ways that we're going to get through this time until we can be open and together again. Art and community are our priorities here at once. We really miss you and we can't wait until we can all be back together. Until then, this is our way of holding our community close and continuing to make art. So before you enjoy the show, a couple of notes. The bathrooms are in the back. On the left, no flash photography and as always, no crowd surfing. Enjoy, we'll see you soon. Woohoo, hi everybody. Oh, I like that where everybody was on the grid. Can you can you put everybody back on the grid again so I can take a picture? Can you do that? Do I have to press anything here then? They've got control over everything. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah, I got it. I got it. Go. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, now how do I get back to where it was? Speak of, what was that then? Where it says speak of you. Yeah. Slick. Um, just in case you're wondering about my hat, yes, it's a original, well, I need to cover this, the wire. It's original Malcolm McLaren Vivian Westwood sex hat. It's yours for $500 because I got it for $8 down the market before things got horrible. And it just seemed to me, I, I think I'm not, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. So, um. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to do how to make 100K. Um, you can throw questions in the chat. And Molly, my fabulous assistant, Molly. Oh, can, did I actually get you on that kind of yeah? yeah. Um, ow. Oh, Jesus. Um, Molly will just like shout out because I'll be, I'll be looking at my slides and doing my thing. And happy to answer questions at the end. Um, just before we start. Oh, who's texting me? Just before we start. It's kind of fucking crazy uh, in Chicago right now. Um, 14 or 15 people were shot last night at a funeral, attending a funeral for somebody who was shot. Um, it just, yeah, and uh, it just feels crazy. And honestly, for me, the things that we're doing, the Stay the Fuck Inside uh, campaign is keeping me sane. It feels, I think my, a change happened for me in May, I think. Is that when we started doing Stay the Fuck Inside? March. 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 Um, instead of trying to help everybody and everything, I started to just focus on, well, 20 t-shirts will help this person or this will help that person or 20 bags of coffee will make cold brew for those people. And, and that's really been a revelation for me. It's kind of kept me going. It's kept me busy as fuck, but it's kept me going. Uh, and if you're an artist, if you're struggling with this shit, Tony Morrison, this is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. Tony Morrison. Um, so yeah, it's kind of fucking crazy. 
Um, I hope you enjoy this. If you are a graphic design person or you have OCD, uh, alert, warning, trigger warning, because fonts just inexplicably change. I counted four fonts in this presentation alone. So uh, don't write to me about that. Just get ready for a font. It's fantastic. Shut up. Okay, how to make an extra 100K next year. Who doesn't want to make an extra 100K? Uh, I don't know, this has been on my mind recently because I can't do this. This is me behind the kit with uh, my band Pig Face, um, December 1st, 2019. Just to my left, and you can only see his hand. <laughs> it's Danny Carey from Tool. Honestly, it's Buddy Rich. No, it's Danny Carey from Tool. Uh, Andrew Weiss from Rollins. I fucking love Andrew Weiss. Um, so nice to see him. Charles Levi on bass. Curse Mackey. Uh, who's that? That's Randall Blythe. Randall Blythe. Randy Blythe holding the flag. Who's that there? That's Logan Johnson. Who? Really? No, Logan. Oh, oh, there's Sammy over there. Okay, well, anyway, but here's what I really love about this picture, because my eyes kind of go all the way around uh, the show, but I just love seeing the two hands uh, at the bottom, uh, just in case I fall over backwards. And I guess we're all trying to be those hands for each other, right? Is this, is this uh, Sally Lawson? Yeah. So this was in Chicago. Someone yeah. just asked if this was at the Yeah. It's, uh, no, no. Uh, Chicago Thali Hall, uh, last night of the tour. Great photograph by uh, Bobby Talamine. Okay, now it doesn't want to switch. Them. Okay, and I should tell you, um, uh, I teach at the beautiful Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. They've been really helpful, actually. Uh, so this is how to make an extra 100K next year. Uh, or you could also call it how to succeed, which prompts the discussion, uh, what is success anyway? Immediately off on a tangent, Martin. Brilliant. Uh, I used to think that this was success, and I might argue with you that it still is um, very difficult to find throughout the 80s across America. Barney's Beanery in Los Angeles, a place in Baton Rouge had it. Um, holy grail of beers. Since bought by Heineken, they've changed the label, they've changed the recipe. And it's, I used to live down the street from Newcastle where this was made. And now I live down the street from where it's made in Chicago, except I don't really care anymore. You could say that this might be success, being on the front cover of Melody Maker or being on American Bandstand. I don't know where these slides are going. Oh. Or a house in LA with the swimming pool and palm trees. Um, you might want to reflect on what success is uh, for you before you go hightailing it down what you think, down the path to what, towards what you think success might be. Just a little asterisk, right? Um, it took me getting to Los Angeles being on the front cover of Melody Maker, hit single with Public Image Limited. This is not a love song. Uh, bowls full of blow. Um, uh, and being on American Bandstand to discover that's like, oh, hold on a minute. This is fucking horrible. So just a word of warning before we go hightailing down this road um, to cash and success to think about what it might be for you before we before you go on your own path. Um, okay. Let's start with some simple stuff. <clears throat> Fear of selling, get over it. <clears throat> I think, I see from artists all the time that they are reluctant to put their wares out. Um, it's one thing to be on stage and play the thing play the song the way you intended it, whether people like it or not, this is what I'm gonna do. 
But when you lay out your wares in front of people, now you give people an opportunity to just walk past. Or as we were talking two or three weeks ago, somebody was saying, nobody ever comes to my merch booth. It's, it, it chips away at you, right? Um, and people can walk past your booth. It's like a slap in the face. Doesn't matter. You have to be there. And you can't delegate, say, ah, oh, would you be behind the booth? You have to be behind the booth. You magnetize people to your booth. Yes, to buy shit, but also for the conversations and the interactions. And the interactions might include selling things, but you have to get over it. Uh, I was at an event in Florida for Dean Guitars. I remember pulling up outside of Dean Guitars and my friend Kurt Mackey used to work there. And uh, he said, uh, I said to him, ah, should I bother really bringing my merch in? And you can hear, right? I was obviously waiting it. I was trying to get to the like, no, don't bother. It's ridiculous. Do you think I'll sell anything? And Kurt said to me, well, you won't sell anything if you don't bring it in. And I was like, oh, fuck, I've written a book about this stuff. And here I am in a car outside of Dean Guitars, trying to have a debate, trying to get to a point where I can rationalize that not bringing the merch in would be a good idea. Get over fear of selling. If it makes you more comfortable as an artist, you sell the melancholy middle eight of the ballad that you wrote. You move into the spotlight so it catches the tear. But you're selling shit all the time, right? So sell shit. Roll your shirts. This is the least cool thing to do ever. Um, means taking your T-shirts and a fold-out plastic table from Home Depot and rolling them. And we got to the point where we insist on they're all, they all have to be the same length. So you fold them up and give people guides, put a rubber band around it, and then you put a piece of tape on the end and um, put the size on a piece of tape. Why? Well, you can see the shirts immediately. Now I find myself looking at this going, where the fuck are all the mediums? Right, so immediately you can keep better inventory, right? But here's, here's the important thing. When you are at your booth, if you are lucky enough to have 20 people in line, 10 people in line, let's be realistic. The first person in line is like, do you have a, do you have a, a large? If you haven't rolled your shirts and sized them, you're just gonna have your head in a box like this, Hold on a minute. I know we've got we've got one somewhere. Now all this is happening. This isn't a conversation about a cool show in Paris or the interesting thing about Savannah, Georgia. It's just you going, eh, we don't have it. Meanwhile, the other nine people in line, especially the last two, are making a calculation. You went on stage late. You played two extra songs as a bonus for your fans on a Tuesday. And now I'm at the back of the line thinking, if this fucking keeps up, this is half an hour with this idiot. I don't want a shirt. I was hoping to say hi, but there's just a frenzy of bullshit and shirts being thrown around. You're going to lose those last two sales. So there you go. One extra shirt per show. $20 extra per show. This isn't like, and therefore you're going to sell out a venue. There's an accumulation of very small things that will grow to make a difference. Also, you've got less confusion, right? Less confusion, better control of your inventory. You're going to sell one more shirt every two events. Half a shirt extra. So we sold one extra shirt and half a shirt every show just because you're on top of your shit. Okay, $100,000. We've got 
uh, $99,970 to go. And I fucking swear to you, once a uh, uh, Somerville audience, by the time we get to 2 a.m., we're going to be under 90 grand. This is good, right? Tomorrow morning, which we do breakfast with once, we're going to be there. 100 fucking K. Tip jar. This is something else that artists used to have, maybe not anymore, but used to have like a phobia. I am not begging for tips. Well, you fucking better. People want to give you money. People want to give you money. You just have to give them the opportunity. It pisses me off when a band doesn't have merch or a tip jar. Make the mechanism available for these exchanges to take place. You need something cool on your tip jar. Sexy people. Sexy people tip. Every time you tip, God saves a kitten. <clears throat> Please help the kitties. Now, of course, you need to make the hilarious slogan on your tip jar brand and band appropriate. So if this was my band pig face, it will be like every time you tip, we'll set a kitten on fire in the alley. Rawr! Of course, we would never do that. It smells really bad. We need your money for drugs and oversized condoms. Be ambitious with it. Humor makes things happen. So by having a tip jar, and I also, I've got to say, this is what we do all the time. I teach this shit. 10% of the time, would you say that's fair, Molly? When we do events up at 2112 and all, where it's like, oh, we forgot the tip jar. 10%. Yeah, 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there are so many little things. Um, you know, sometimes we forget the tip jar. Now I find myself at Target. If I'm looking at like the family cup size container of pretzel bites, I'm like, that's a fucking great tip jar right there. And I'll bring it home, and force my kids to eat a million pretzels like pate de foie gras, geese being force fed. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Tip jar, fifteen dollars. Now, um, uh, a digital tip jar. I think that's a. This is an app whose name I've forgotten. Um, but you might say, well, we've already got the tip jar, Martin. No, no, no. Multiple jazz hands. Multiple uh, avenues. However, anybody wants to do this stuff, you give them the ways to do it. Oh, come on, fucking PowerPoint. Um, this is, oh, this is Jam Jar, a tip jar music app. So you can, um, you can uh, get requests and people can tip you. You can make it interactive, which is kind of cool. Um, also, uh, my son Ian ran merch for Pigface on the last tour. And you can enable your square your square reader to have tips and it's so here he is with a tip jar probably two tip jars stereo tip jars on the booth and he's still god bless him enabled tipping and square and <clears throat> did all right absolutely did all right also ask don't be afraid to ask um, we had on that the pig face tour where you, you saw the photograph at the end we had a show in denver and they were literally closing the highway uh our drivers were on satellites like okay here's the thing i had this crazy conversation where like look if we don't make it to denver we're not going to make the next show either but we should be able to get to chicago just like horrifying stuff and so <clears throat> i saw a container a champagne bucket very much like this backstage and um before we performed the encore i walked out on stage with the bucket i said hey isn't it great that we're here yes you know you can take people down a road don't you love it then? yes we made it here in the snow yes we love you all right well we wouldn't be here without our fucking driver um 
So I'm handing out this bucket. Fill the fucking bucket for our driver and we'll play a song. And, um, and people did actually. Um, and, and then um, how cool was it to give, I think we gave the drivers like $480 in this bucket. And, but we, instead of just like giving, hey, there's a tip in your thing, we celebrated, we got everybody on, we had two buses, everybody on one of the buses and called the driver to the front. And I think he was like, oh, okay, give me the $50. And I gave him this huge wadge, $480 in singles, fives and twenties. And he fucking cried, he fucking cried. So I guess this will be the first place I would stop and remind you that this isn't about money. I mean, it is, but it isn't. However, it is. Uh, we also did this as well. So we're rolling in amongst this, right? The shirt I wore last night, which fucking probably stunk and is covered in blood. We would auction that the next night so I don't have to do laundry. Um, this guy, oh, that's covered in blood. I will punch the mirror ball. I don't know if you saw the mirror ball in that photograph. Um, and then we raised, I, I don't know if that's 720 or 750. I can't see it, 720. Um, so once you're in it, find find the stuff. Of course, you've got all of the things you plan to do, but start doing other stuff as well. If you have a choice of shirts, uh, you'll sell more. More choice equals more sales. This is also a reason if you saw the first, the second one of these, it's also a reason you need to learn how to screen print. If you can screen print, and this is a three screen, it's another pig face shirt, another offensive pig face shirt. Um, but uh, nothing is involved in just putting a different colored shirt, tie dyed shirt, pair of pants, whatever you want, the back of a jacket, uh, putting it underneath the press. So now you've got a choice. I don't know how many. Not many bands in the industrial genre have green t-shirts, but some people in an audience of a thousand, oh, it's my favorite color, but whatever, you're gonna sell more. Have a choice of shirts, more choice equals more sales. That's two more shirts per show, pitching $40. Give away songs all the time, your best ones. Used to have this discussion years ago, some people are still having it. They don't think you should give away stuff or an artist will reluctantly agree to give away some shitty live recording. You just give away your best songs. You have one chance to make a first impression. And 80s business was protecting your shit. 2020 business is removing the protective cup from your pants. I'm going all baseball now because um, you know how sporty I am. Uh, and you remove the protective cup, the metaphorical protective cup from your pants and you give somebody a hammer. And you might think, and, and you ask them not to smash you in the crotch with the, what's fucking going on? You ask them not to smash you in the crotch with the hammer. Here's the weird thing. If you give me a little tiny G.I. Joe plastic hammer, I'll fucking kill you with it because now you've created this impossible challenge. You have uh, 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 besmirched the rules of trust that this has to do with. If, however, you give me a sledgehammer, I'll be like, wave goodbye to your crotch. Uh, and halfway through, winding up for this insane crotch smash. I'd be like, you know what, mate? I can't do it. Let's have a beer, right? There's this trust relationship going on. You give away your best stuff all the time. And that's how you form this relationship. Speaking of giving away your best stuff all the time, this could be an ad for my book. Here's Band Smart. Ah, ah, it looks like hundreds of pages. It fucking is. How many 600 is it? Plus. 617 pages. I thought you should have known that actually, Molly. We always say 600 plus and 150 <laughs> plus contributors. Really? Yeah. 
150 contributors. So there's the good news. It's not just fucking me blithering on. Uh, 150 contributors. Uh, so speaking of free, uh, go to martinatkins.com and you can download a free copy of Bansmart. martinatkins.com. And of course, I'm going to send you an email every once in a while. I'm doing it once again next week. Learn how to screen print. Um, this feels like such an integral part of many of these ideas. Um, yeah, you just have to learn how to screen print. If you missed, uh, it's in the chat. It's in the chat? Mm -hmm. What, a link to it? Mm -hmm. Ah, boom. So here's, what, here's another reason you need to learn how to screen print. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. Welcome to the music business. You're fucked, right? <clears throat> so if you can make this shirt yourself with a little bit of machinery, uh, I can make a hundred of these in an hour. What the fuck, right? So it's, it's and it'll cost me maybe 250, maybe $3 maximum per shirt. So that's the shirt I'm gonna give away. If you give away that shirt instead of a different shirt that you were paying four fifty for, and you give away however many shirts per event, and you should give away a bunch of shirts per event, you're saving thirteen fifty. Does that make sense? Now you might think, uh, well, you should be giving away stuff to create these relationships. But what weirdly, what happens when you give away a shirt? People will invariably say, "Thanks for the shirt." like to buy that shirt there so you give away the shirt that you can make easily that's inexpensive and you enable facilitate fuel the sales of the more expensive items it's just what happens worst case scenario you give somebody who doesn't have any fucking money a shirt they're gonna wear the shit out of that shirt and <clears throat> one of the things that i've found If you're looking to do some smash and grab three-year exploration into the music business, fuck off, right? It doesn't happen. It's seven years to be an overnight sensation. Seven fucking years. I just saw a, a screenshot from Gary Vaynerchuk today. I worked in my parents' wine store, which he kind of transformed for 11 years, 15 years, did my post-cat post, post, post Podcasts, <laughs> podcast for eight years, and then he started his business. Right, there are no overnight sensations in this business, <clears throat> and I guarantee you, if if somebody has no money and you give them a shirt, which is probably up on your merch board for twenty twenty five dollars, that's unforgettable shit. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know why that person doesn't have any money. You don't know like their electricity just cut, cut off or their partner just ditched them. Somebody could be having a really shitty day. They'll never forget that you gave them a shirt. Even though you go country and Western, you know, they'll still love you and come to your shows. Protect your assets, by which of course I mean, always have something else to sell. If you only have that Welcome to the Music Business Your Fuck t-shirt and you give it away, you're fucked, aren't you? You need to have four other shirts, at least one or two other shirts with the choice. So people are like, oh, fuck, right? Also have a range, jazz hands again. You want to allow somebody who's just got a fucking rebate check or something, just licensed a song to iRobot, fucking whatever to give you $100, to sprinkle it around. And if you only have 10 and $20 items, have a $100 item, uh, right? You're not gonna sell many, but when you do, it'll be sweet as fuck. I had a, a, an eight track cartridge uh, of the Pig Face album, six. We only made like 50 of them. And I signed and numbered them and they were $100. I remember being in a bar in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And, <clears throat> For some reason, I think I was DJing, I don't know what was going on. We didn't strike the merch booth. The merch booth was the last thing to get put away as they're wiping down the bar. And the bar staff had a really great night. And one of them 
bought some stuff and the other one dropped a hundred dollars on the eight track cartridge. Give people that, allow people to be as generous as they want to be. Paint the producer's house instead of paying for studio time. This is something that my good friend and uh, inspirational to me, uh, Kimberly Freeman does, did, does. She saved $3,000 and she has such a huge social media presence. She took some time off recently, but she had such a huge social media presence that studios and producers were lining up. Well, do your next one here because she did so much posting during the days. Like, here we are. Here's the console. I love this vocal booth, blah, blah, blah. It was a great boost for the studios. So you just saved three grand right there. Stay with me here. Once Somerville and everybody else that's around install a jacuzzi. Go to culinary school. What is that? That just looks like it's going to kill somebody. Oh, the thing on the top is fried as well. It looks like a donut or like a fritter. Fuck it up. Hungry now. Brew amazing beer. They don't make this, an arcade brewery used to make this really great uh, cocoa brown ale. Yeah. What's all that all about? Uh, install bunks. And these are the reasons things will be better two years from now, three years from now, four years from now. I met a woman in Cleveland at an event <clears throat> and she had this kind of a couple of really worn tattered exercise books with rubber bands around and pieces of paper coming out. And she said to me, well, at least I know anywhere my son goes in the country, he'll be taken care of. And I'm like, well, actually you don't know that. America's a frightening place. And she's like, so I've got to stop you there. Over the last few years, we put in bunk beds in our basement, screaming Wi-Fi. Um, she cooked Ban's breakfast, um, helped with laundry. I think there might have been a separate laundry down there. She says, over the course of the last few years, we've let any band that wanted to stay with us. And we had breakfast and we made friends. And now we know all those people. My son has the support of all these people. I'm like, that's the fucking most genius fucking thing I've heard in a long time. Um, and sure, some of the bands you help will break up. Maybe they'll they'll give up. Some of them will go on to do bigger and better things. But i still friends with people whose floors I slept on in 1982. Right? This is, this is how this shit works. So you can engineer these situations if you want. Maybe the, the, the difference in thought is if you're thinking, oh, how can I get to Cleveland? How can I get to Boston? How can I get to Chicago? But if you really want to go to Boston, instead of going there and playing to four people, which you will if you're fucking lucky, if there isn't a reason, entice artists from Boston to come to you. Help them, right? Just switch it around. It's slightly awesome. Help them. And at some point, they will help you. That's how this shit works. I can't say this enough. You have to, have to, have to, said it three times, stay on top of the newest technology. Um, oh, oh, hold on a second. Hello? No, I'm doing a, I'm doing an event right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, we got a little bit off track. <clears throat> Let's get back to it. Uh, so far, we've made a difference of $98.50 per show. Here's a good one. Stop playing where your fans aren't. You'll save money on expenses and play to more people. It's really simple to look at data these days. Heat maps from the orchard. Spotify have... Oh, Spotify have... Um, uh, data where you can find your biggest fans in each area. This is something Wendy Day 
talks about all the time. Find the biggest fans in each area, honor them with a VIP ticket or something like that. I love doing this stuff. Um, what's that program we used for maps and data and zip codes? Z maps. Z maps. Z is that, it's not free, is it? There is a free version. Why is, is it shit? No, it isn't shit. It's just simple. Okay. Z maps, Z E E. Are you putting a link on the thing? So you can see data. We did this for Pigface in 2016. I just wanted to see where everybody was. And the next thing you know, instead of posting again, please come to our show, we were posting, holy fuck. People are coming from all over the country and all over the world. Manchester, England, uh, Norway. Like, and then, then people start to respond to the post because it wasn't, please come, don't forget. We're right? People are posting, that dot in Dallas, that's me, right? And I could say, Texas, you're such a huge disappointment. Where is everybody? Just change the conversation. Uh, let's get physical. Uh, this is our, uh, we showed this in the, in the screen printing workshop. <clears throat> Don't forget physical goods. Tony Van Veen from CD Baby. Well, they're manufacturing CDs, so he is going to say this, but he will say, don't forget about CDs. Even somebody who has you on their Spotify and has vinyl might buy a CD or to show. Why? Because it's the thing you use to put an autograph on. <laughs> Think about that stuff. But this is a, a pig face double vinyl reissue, glow in the dark vinyl. And as you can see here, uh, this is a hand screen glow in the dark uh, cover. And uh, we sell those for $60 a piece, 300 copies of that, it's $18,000. One stream, whatever a stream is worth, um, that's four and a half million streams. So you should be streaming, easy peasy, you don't have to do anything. I think it's the addition of physical goods and the story and, ooh, look what happens when you turn out the lights. Not everybody has $60 to drop on vinyl, but they're like, oh, this is amazing. You've made the connection. Now they'll, when, when the stream happens, it's, it's different. Did that make sense? Am I making sense? Metallica do a very good job. Uh, oh, this is strange. Uh, I spoke to uh, Michael Anthony Alago, uh, who worked with Public Image Limited when we were on Electra Records, and at the age of 24, fucking signed, discovered Metallica and signed them. Um, but Lars Ulrich uh, looks at all the data. They look at their Spotify lists. They always play a couple of the top songs that are being streamed in each market. And because uh, Lars has all of the set lists from forever, they will always play a song that they've never played before in that market, which fuels streams and sales ultimately of uh, the live recording from each show. I don't have a dollar amount for that, but all of this stuff adds up. Stop making albums, make singles, EPs, live albums, and record covers. Covers are revenue from YouTube. There's also a really good way to reach out. Uh, Jack Alberson, a uh, guy I know from Memphis did a, he does covers and near, next thing you know, the band whose name I've forgotten, uh, Jesus Jones. Did they do, um, who did Unbelievable? Ba, 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 ba. Are you on that, Molly? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anybody in the chat wants to, want to help? Unbelievable. EMF. Oh, EMF. Okay. So he did a cover of that and they're like, they discovered it online and start giving him some internet love. It's all good. Uh, covers from revenue on YouTube. Yeah. $2. But yeah. It's yeah, not happening very much, but you are your own chain store. Back in the day, we used to pay for coverage at Best Buy, uh, end racks, uh, uh, placement in, in, uh, in the racks. Um, and then it dawned on me like, well, when we go out and play to seven, 800 people a night, those are our fans. Um, what better time? Um, 
to, to work with them there rather than paying random money to Best Buy to have people who buy toasters accidentally discover your music. And so we started actually to, uh, we'd have three or four street team uh, people, the people that help us all over the country, actually go into the crowd with uh, notepads and free CDs to give away. Hey, if you want to sign up to our list, right? Because what better time? You're making your next return trip to that city twice as successful at half the price. You just have to contact the people you've already started a relationship with. You need 30 minutes of sell time after your show. Um, <clears throat> some bars like to have acts go all the way to the end so they can keep selling beer. I get that. But you need the sell time after a show. There's nothing worse than coming off stage and people are being shoved out of a club. Uh, you need the sell time afterwards. Put it in your agreement. But just make sure it happens. Make sure it happens. That's on you. You can't say, oh, the club said we... The club are saying that because you went on late to hope that 10 more people showed up. Go on, on time, uh, get off on time and have 30 minutes of sell time. Uh, have live albums, books, other shit. Chris Conley just released a book of lyrics. How fucking easy is that, right? Put them in order or and come up with some like, I'll never forget this song, you know put some tears on the typewritten page, whatever you want to do, a book of lyrics. Amanda Palmer is really good at this. She'd do like the book of the making of the album and the DVD of the making of the book of the album. Just do stuff. And don't worry about a live album. I don't think many people listen to live albums unless somebody was there and had a coughing fit or screamed really loudly or was singled out by a comedian. Those people, I've had people like, we conceived our first child after that show. We met at that show. Do you have it? It's like, I keep forgetting to find out for, for this one guy. But uh, Live albums are important for different reasons other than the sound quality. I don't know how I have pictures of my get the fuck out of bed coffee. But invent your own coffee or whatever and launch it in Japan. Uh, so we've added shirts, other items. We've had time to sell. We sped up the process of selling. We've increased the choices for people to buy. We've increased the grooviness of the range of items. And now we've an equivalent of an extra $163.50 per show. How do we get this to add up and make a difference? Book your fucking self. <clears throat> why because you need to do 12 events a week if you're away from your job your pets your partner a toilet um wh wh what are you doing you know i know bands who are like oh well we only do five shows a week well fuck off then right i don't know how to make that budget work um uh, as you're as you're coming up um I mean, when I was a kid, I used to back strippers on sometimes a Saturday, but absolutely Sunday afternoon. So I, used, I was doing eight shows a week when I was 13, 12, 13. But if you're on a spreadsheet, that number, 12 or five, if you're only doing five events a week, that's called the multiplier. So all of the numbers that we've come up with, your multiplier is either five events a week or 12. They don't have to be 12 kick-ass acoustically perfect stage set, you know, two hour shows. That's why I deliberately said events. If you're doing something interesting, like, ooh, well, I made a guitar out of horse shit. And this is that album. Excuse the smell, it's not me, it's my horse shit guitar. The guitar might be horse shit, but it's playing is amazing, right? You're enabling these headlines by doing something interesting. Maybe you could go to a local university and do a workshop. How I made awesome music on my literally asterisk shit guitar. Biohazard alert, right? I mean, <clears throat> do something interesting. The, an orchestra in South America, 
um, they couldn't afford any instruments, so they made instruments out of trash. And now that orchestra tours the world playing their trash made instruments. Right? Do something interesting and then talk about it. I see so many examples. Uh, uh, I mean, I go out and, and, and do speaking gigs all the time, but <clears throat> I see so many examples of people who've done a couple of interesting things, wrote a book and speak. You know, I add DJing badly. Um, so Adam, I see Adam. Adam helped me on my first DJ gig. I borrowed his headphones. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Like, what a wanker. <laughs> what a wanker. I was like, hello, what's happening? Do you have any headphones? <laughs> Which is kind of like DJ taboo, right? Ooh, can I borrow your headphones? No, you fucking can't. But Adam let me let me his headphones. I don't remember where we were, Adam. Um, but thank you. Are you putting that in the, I can't see the chat from here. My chat's disabled. But, so I'll do a DJ, I'll do a DJ gig. Um, you could do an after show, after your show. Um, I see Killing Joke do this all the time. Uh, youth who plays bass in Killing Joke, original bass player, God bless Paul Raven, he's not around anymore. Uh, he'll do an after show and the band show up. So it's cool. Half the audience shows up um, and it's just cool as hell. It's exhausting. He also spends the afternoon painting in an alleyway and selling his still wet paintings at the merch booth. It's exhausting, but if you can get into that mindset, like it's noon, what am I gonna do? Rather than, oh, it's noon, I've still got 11 hours before the show, Jägermeister. <clears throat> if you can get into this creative mindset, it really uh, pays dividends. Once you are out on the road and doing 12 events a week, why on earth do you need an apartment? If everybody in your band gives up their apartment, that's $2,000 a month. Right? You don't do that initially. You start by doing three shows, two shows, four shows, three shows, to become weekend warriors, and you just keep doing that. And you take a couple of days off and you go a bit further, and you get to a point where it's like, hey, we've built the shit guitar. We're, one of us is a DJ. Somebody else is painting. Somebody else can do a mandolin repair workshop, right? Everybody's doing stuff. Then you, that's when you go out and kill it, put everything in storage and just make it happen. Is that 100K? Has anybody been like, <laughs> <clears throat> well, it isn't. But it's close. And you keep adding to all of these ideas and you'll get there. Um, you want to know how to triple your concert ticket sales. It's the same thing that I see bands in England doing this all the time. Here's our new single in five different colors of vinyl. I'm like, oh, you bastards. You're penalizing your most rabid fans who you know are going to buy red, purple, blue, yellow, clear. And then the splodgy one where the ink's gone all crazy. Well, so people are like, wow, how can you, what is it called when you multiply your sales by five? Quint quintuple. Quintuple? Or four times, you could quadruple, <laughs> let's stick to quadruple. You could quadruple your seven inch single sales by have, I've done it with different jackets, different screen printed jackets, different folded up posters from the Cultural Revolution for the red vinyl pig face seven inch, right? Some people will buy four. We framed sets of four. You can triple your concert ticket sales by looking at a map of where you're going, understanding where your audiences are and go, hmm, we're playing Cleveland and Dayton. How can I get all the people from Dayton to come to Cleveland? We've got a horn section and someone's doing live graffiti on my shaved head. Oh, whoa and do something interesting in Dayton as well. So people, you love the show, fucking Cleveland's gonna be amazing. Really? I'll put two of you on the guest list. And now you've given people a reason to come to more shows, right? If you come at this thinking, nobody cares, how can I make them care? You can make this work. If you're coming at this thinking, we're amazing, you're fucked, you are so fucked, because everybody's amazing. 
uh, create VIP experiences. Um, we've done this with, with my band Pigface. Is that my next slide? Okay, well, uh, VIP experiences are high value to the fan and low cost for you to create. You would be surprised, even for a small band, um, if you create a VIP experience, a VIP ticket with a special pass and a thing and early access and just to sit down and chat. I've seen some really small bands do this really well. And like six people show up for the VIP experience. And you think, ah, really? You know, because that's our training, right? If it isn't a crowd and a security guard, help me, I'm drowning in people. But six people, if they paid $75 a piece or $100 a piece, just to keep the math easy, $50 a piece, it's an extra $300 or $600, whatever your price point is. And for some artists, playing at a small venue, that might be, that might double their guarantee. You know, it's a great way to honor your super fans, start, deepen that relationship with them and uh, enable this stuff to spread. Once again, 10 years ago, <clears throat> uh, I don't think much of this stuff was happening. Now, I try and be conscious of that person who doesn't have any money as well. So I'll still sign stuff and spend time with anybody who hasn't paid for the VIP experience, right? Um, I never want to be that person. But um, enable people to do this and spend time with you and take a photo and have a blueberry muffin. And uh, yeah, that's the, um, the package we created for Pigface 2019. Uh, buying a VIP tickets, you got to pass two exclusive t shirts. Red vinyl seven. Oh, I should, I'm pointing at my screen. I should be doing this. Red vinyl seven inch split single with Galen Lee, um, Trent uh, doing suck on the other side. A 27 ways to suck download, which didn't, of course didn't cost us anything, with your two tickets, and um, it was a lot of work. Uh, I ended up hand signing notes. Once you know the address that a package is going to. You also know the name of the person. Why wouldn't you hand sign in, dear Steve, thanks, see you at the gig. Ah. Um, and then we started throwing in handfuls of candy into these VIP packages. And you just make them so cool that when anybody receives them, they spread them out on the bed and post to Instagram and Facebook, right? It's easy to make this stuff happen if you want to. Ah, this is our fucking war room board where we track VIP ticket sales, uh, everything. Also look to see if the problem that we've created, lie, the solution to the problem lies within the problem. I'm not really sure. I know exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm not sure what, what it's doing here. Uh, different mindset. Don't be afraid of creating a problem. Uh, Gua would be a great example. What a fucking problem that is for everybody concerned with it. Travel, costumes, uh, uh, meals, hotel rooms, everything. But they created something that the solution to the problem lies within it because Guar is still going. They created the myth and the longevity, right? If they hadn't done that, if they'd made it easier at the beginning, they wouldn't have anything going on now. So um, we just did a crazy tour, but we recorded a bunch of those crazy shows. Uh, with 17 people on stage. Hold on a minute. The 17, 18, 20 people on stage all happen to be awesome from uh, Danny Carey to Randy Blythe and everybody else. So we created a live album and everybody signed the inserts for the album, which just went off to be manufactured to yesterday. But sometimes the solution to the problem you create lies within the thing. There's no straight line from A to B. How do I connect with John Doe, guitarist of the legendary LA punk band X? Uh, I send out a bunch of my voodoo dolls and he ends up in Texas with my voodoo doll. And now we can connect and yeah. How am I doing on time? How is everybody? Do you want some more? I can't see any responses from anybody. Yes, please, we 
Yes, please. Oh, um, yes. Thank, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Two people. I'm here for you. I'm going to bounce through these. Um, so you see stuff. This is a really good example. Uh, right there is uh, a dollar bill uh, extracted from this huge scenery. Oh, the scenery behind me, uh, Newcastle Brown Ale from the Pig Face 1994 tour, which Danny Kerry was also on. Um, there's, uh, you could see up there, the hubcap marimba uh, that test department created out of um, pieces of the ministry cage and hubcaps. You create a museum of you. Of course, I didn't have to make those backdrops but they for Killing Joke, but they turned out to be used on the Money Is Not Our God video. So now those things from 20, 30 years ago are pretty valuable. Um, so it's up to you to create the museum of you or not. Um, so here, here are the ways to advice to, to do that. Sign it. Uh, I try and sign everything. Uh, I've got rubber stamps and all kinds of things. This is a sequential number stamp here. So on the artwork for this, it just says slash 500, because this is a series of 500 souvenir laminates with the original tape that sealed the metal box. It's signed. I like to sign in a different color so you know it wasn't Xerox. So sign it. Title it. Uh, this is more pig face scenery. These banners were 40 feet high, six banners across. I call this dot screen Madonna. So these things, you give something a title. You give it a date. Number it, we already did that. Explain it. This is an original piece of the tape that was produced to seal the metal box in 1979. Very little remains, of course, because it's fucking 40 years ago. It was decided that the packaging had cost too much money and the idea was scrapped. Oh, you just explained it. Place it in a larger context. Here's that piece, that dot screen Madonna piece in the larger con context. On stage with Pigface at the Vic Theatre in Chicago with, uh, was that Christoph from Bile, Charles Levi, uh, uh, Chris Haskett from Rollins is on there somewhere, Chris Connolly singing. Frame it. We've, uh, we've done that with a few pieces. Greta Brinkman, who also came out with Pigface, made some frames out of reclaimed church pew wood, which I like that. But frame stuff, um, it enhances the value. Document it. Has it been exhi exhibited, written about, mentioned, illustrated, or in publications, uh, included in a catalog, received an award, defaced by a crazy person? <gasps> that cigarette burned in the top screen, Madonna. I think that was Olga from Skinny Puppy with a lit cigarette. Ah. List the ingredients. Um, what, what media uh, were used? Uh, add a few more effortless value enhancers. Take a picture of yourself holding it, sitting or standing next to the artwork. Shoot a brief video of yourself making or talking about your art. That's when I shoot a screen, I love to take a picture of the screen because it's backwards and anything that's backwards immediately makes people's brains, it's a, it's a schema. It makes people's brains engage. What is that? And solve the problem of what this is. And now I got you. Keep track of who owns your artwork. When retrospective time rolls around, you'll be glad you did. I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Uh, provide printed information with each piece of your art, like your bio resume statement. Um, uh, something called a letter of provenance. So we're stepping into art world now and you get to use different words like provenance, letter of provenance. This is a piece of the original scenery. I'll hand type that on an old typewriter, rubber stamp it, sign it in a different color. And now you've enhanced the value of this uh, piece. You need 15 reasons that your show will be successful. If you only have one, two, or three, and one of them is a poster, you're fucked. You need 15. Stop trying to succeed in the music business, 1990. It's 2020. 
Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, see if anybody has any questions. Okay. Here's something I want to mention. Because it seems like, well, my internet connection is unstable. Uh, it seems like <clears throat> we're talking about money, money, money. Another $10, another $5. Truest, most reliable path for you to make an extra 100K is to help somebody else make their 100K, right? I've just seen this. You put this energy out there and it fucking sparkles and will come back to you. So fuck everything I said about this and that and this and that. That's all strategy. Don't be so consumed with your own success that... Uh, that you think for a second that standing on somebody else's head is going to elevate your position. We're all in this shit together. Elevate, elevate everyone and that will elevate you. Okay. I'm going to look at the chat now. Oh, is there, is there Q and A or just? No, just a chat. <clears throat> huh. Money equals internet connection. Hey, we're, we're, huh? We're blazing. We're blazing. We're blazing. Uh, we're $200 a month in with Comcast here. Um, it adds up. Okay. I warned you about what? Fonts? Okay. So I don't see any questions from anybody. Is Q and A enabled on here? No, this is a meeting. Oh, oh, thanks, thanks, Al. Would Would you explain again how covers equals revenue on YouTube? Yeah, you do get paid for the views, not much. Um, but I think my my main suggestion for doing a cover doesn't have to do with revenue. In that, what is it? Two dollars per. Uh, uh, thousand views. That seems high. Um, the main reason I suggest doing covers is that it goes like this for your fan base. Um, I know that lots of people say, oh, we kind of sound like this band, you know, to try and tag people. But if you just cover another artist that you think their fans might like you, that's a great way to, uh, to get into their fans' heads and, and, and try and get some traction from that. Does that help, Diane? Uh-oh, what, typos? I warned you about typos, come on. That's not fair. Really, I come out on a Wednesday, the night, the night before two of my son's birthday, and you're giving me grief over apostrophes. Bastards, you internet bastards. Uh, the copyright issue with covers? Um, uh, that's a good question on YouTube. Uh, can you do a cover on YouTube and not get dinged for it? The the writers get the writers get the money from that, don't they? There's actually a very good like forty minute long video essay from this woman on YouTube that I like um, talking about how. Fun I mean, it's it's still being figured out in the courts. Really? Yeah. I do know that YouTube pay more than a lot of people, don't they? Yeah. Um, also, on that subject, if you see what Spotify just did, um, uh, every year for the last four years, Spotify have reduced their payments by 8% to the artists. So, so you know, anybody campaigning to get another another cent for every thousand streams. I mean, that's not gonna happen. They're just gonna keep reducing it. But uh, they just paid a lot of money to, um, who's that podcaster guy whose name I forgot, Joe Rogan. 
uh, I think one of the reasons for their move into podcasting. So you've got an album that's, let's say it's an hour. A Joe Rogan podcast is three hours and he's doing one every two days, right? So he already has however many fucking, way more hours than you or I will ever have of content. Um, so now they're looking, their entire pie of streams uh, and then distribution, they're already looking to kind of carve out podcasting as a separate whole thing. So um, even though music might have pulled people into Spotify, now you're used to using it. Oh, Joe Rogan's not on YouTube anymore, he's on Spotify. Even though that music enabled that pathway, I think, and enabled uh, uh, the familiarity in the same way that, that uh, genre by genre by genre, CDs were introduced. You know, Michael Jackson's new album, you can only get it on CD. Phil Collins' new album, you can only get it on CD for the first two months. So you go and buy a CD player, whatever. Now Spotify has done that. They're looking to now use podcasts as a way to decrease the total amount of money that's distributed. Yeah, anyway. Uh, it's still great. Oh, yeah, exposure is the, I don't want to get into the, the 0. 0.000 whatever. Um, Oh, there you go, Brian. Chemical Straight Jacket, love my sci-fi book. See, that's shit. You know, write a song about a book, write a book about a song, invent a recipe about, oh, there, I forget the name of the band. Uh, I forget the name of, uh, who's the band where you will go to the bakery? Uh, and I forget the name of the song, but, if you bought the cupcake, you got a free download. If you if you bought the single, you got a free coupon to go in the bakery and, uh, and get a cupcake. And I've completely forgotten who that was. Okay. Uh, since radio is basically dead, what do you recommend to get your music heard? Well, uh, some of the things I've talked about. Uh, Andy Cernovitz who's part of the Word of Mouth Institute, uh, has, has a great book on the subject. And he said, advertising is the cost of being boring, right? So there's that pig face gub reissue. It's glow in the dark, limited edition, hand screened. Um, I talked about making a guitar out of horse poop. Uh, um, actually a band called Whaler, W-A-L-E-R, um, in Europe, uh, made an album cover out of elephant poop, which is amazing. And it turns out it's like 20% elephant poop. But advertising is the cost of being boring. My friend Moldova, M -O, do you have a link for Moldova, Molly? Mm -hmm. He made uh, a CD and the back of the CD, it's electronic circuit board. And he wrote the names of the songs in electronic circuitry. Ooh, that's amazing. But then he also thought, because he's a fucking genius, why don't I make a circuit on this board for a light sensitive theremin with a headphone jack out and a button and uh, his album's fucking amazing. And all you can do when you get it is not listen to the CD, but like nee, 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 doo, 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 start playing it for an hour. Um, and um, uh those were $50 a piece and he sold out pretty quickly. 500 initial run, that's $25,000. Um, but I've taken his albums all over the world, shown them to people in my packaging lecture. Uh, so you do something interesting and that virus, sorry, that virus will spread. You know, one of my kids said to me, we've got this publicity thing, dad. Uh, we're like zombies. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, well, one zombie bites a person. Now there's two zombies. And those two zombies bite two people. There's four, eight, 16, 32, 64 grains of wheat on the chessboard. So I think one of the problems is we're trying to go, how do I get recognition on the World Wide Web? Yeah. How do I get the person next to me in the coffee shop to fucking pay attention? How can I help a person down the street? S stay local at first and build something and, and uh, do something noteworthy. Um, 
I think that the easiest thing to do right now is help. We're doing lots of stuff helping people and people will help you back. I say, I used to say to bands all the time, support the scene and the scene will support you. What I mean is, how do you expect people to come out and see you if you don't go out and see other people? Uh, and there's a ratio. I think you need to go and see somebody else eight times before they will come and see you once. That's just fucking the way it is. You, may, you know, anybody can go and see an artist once, but the seventh time you're there, the singer's like, fuck, fuck, you want a beer? Fuck, you know, and that's when you say, wow, I'm playing down the street tomorrow. And the singer's like, oh, fuck. They'll do the math in their head. I don't want to go out tonight. I'm not interested in the music that this person is playing, but they've been to seven of our shows so far. Gotta go, right? You can make this stuff happen for yourself. Of course, your music has to be good. You can't be an asshole. Those are givens. But you, you, you do interesting stuff for other people and have it come back to you. I'm sorry, I'm reading this. You can A-B test, you can run programs. Yeah, of course, you can A-B test. This is uh, Michelle, thank you. Uh, that's a great um, a great function of MailChimp. Um, it becomes all about the subject line. What should the subject line say? Uh, Martin Atkins at once, presentation. Ah, uh, free donuts with Martin's presentation. Like which one is going to work the best? I don't know. You don't have to know. We have 25,000 people on our mailing list and we can say to MailChimp, test these two subject lines to 2,000 people. And the one that gets the best result, use that for the remaining 23,000. Another way of A-B testing is getting out there and performing live. You can hypothesize till the cows come home. Where are my donuts? Uh, well, I think this song is better. I love it when the 12 string acoustic comes in, go out and play live. Play more of the songs where people slowly walk towards the stage and magnetize people and play less of the songs where you start the song and people run. Uh, no one's polite anymore. No one's gonna stick around through the five difficult, too long, out of tune, badly conceived songs with the smoke machine too late at night, people will just leave. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Do you think bands should do shows now at venues that only half or less of a crowd during the pandemic? Is anybody even allowed to do that? I mean, even if you were like great white, having like being partially responsible for a bunch of people dying in a fire, just did a concert with a bunch of people. That seems ridiculously irresponsible. Um, that will be my message there. Stay the fuck inside. No show, yeah, no shows until 2022. Outdoor shows were allowed here. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I sent a message to uh, Azalee uh, Panama Canio. Um, she does merch, she's a promoter and a marketer, and she's involved with Extreme Terror Assault the uh, extreme metal outdoor camping festival. I don't know if they're allowed to, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, fuck Great White, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, Alexander Lawrence is saying money isn't in albums. Well, it is and it isn't, and, and I mean that literally. It is um, when you're selling an album. I just showed you the Pig Face double album reissue that's $60. There is um, the Pig Face Live double album mastered by Mayor Applebaum with insert, signed insert, gold pen, 25 people have autographed this thing. We're selling the shit out of that. But we're also giving away um, uh, a live concert and a digital downloads. So it is, and it isn't. You, if you can do both, um, that's where this stuff lies. And by all means, bake a cake, come up with a recipe book, a lyric book, a hand-painted watercolor book, put your album inside of a fish and bake it, right? Yeah, don't do shows inside. 
Yeah, it just seems crazy. It just seems crazy. Hobart, are you in Australia? Is Hobart New Zealand? Hobart, Indiana. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say that just demonstrates the global reach of Zoom. And, <laughs> and here we are, Indiana. Just what are you fucking, it's my neighbor next door. Uh, I, and I forgot, I can't, having some shows in a certain amount of the crowd. Yeah, I mean, I'm frightened. Uh, 27 people on stage with pig face. You know, I'm punching the mirror ball. I'm bleeding all over stuff. Uh, we can't even, and then getting on a bus this far away from somebody. Yeah, it's fucked. Um, I see Adam, um, a generous few make it possible with tipping. Yeah, um, make stuff. Um, uh, do a poster. It, you can cross pollinate. We, we had screen posters, some awesome glow in the dark stuff, some just bad stuff on newsprint. Um, if you make things available for people um, as, as just a, so it's a that way transaction. I know you're giving a performance and they tip, but if you can add stuff to that, um, give people a reason to interact and give, um, uh, I like this physical exchange. I, I just think it's the time to do that. Somebody mentioned in the thread, um, there's never been a better time to reach out to people. And, uh, you know, on Saturdays, I, I do um, these events I call Memories about my time in Public Image Limited. Um, and um, I thought, excuse me, I thought that um, everybody would show up for an event and if I did another event, 80% of those people would show up again and 20% new people. It was actually the opposite. 80% um, new people, 20% return visitors. So we're on our 10th PIL event right now. And we're using this opportunity to go into people's homes uh, at ridiculous times, the right time for Japan, the right time for the UK, which is six hours ahead of us in Chicago, five hours ahead of you in Boston, and slowly, incrementally build up a core audience. There's over, I think, 1,200 people now on our PIL uh, memories event list. Uh, so it gets easier and you build this thing and you build this thing. So if you're prepared to do the work, and that's always the asterisk on this stuff, if you're prepared to do the work, show up uh, time and time again, you can build up your audience now. and then. In six months' time, after you've done a bunch of these events, collage all the information together and see where everybody is. So before you head out on your North American tour, it's like, oh, shit, all of our fans are somewhere else. Uh, also, um, yeah, very worldwide right now. Absolutely. I'm doing free touring classes. I don't know if I'm Molly has a link. I'm doing free touring classes because I wrote a book about touring, Tour Smart, that start on Monday. Our first wait list filled up really quickly, 103 people from fucking everywhere. Australia, New Zealand, El Salvador, three people from El Salvador, Chile, UK, Netherlands, Greece. Like, fuck. It's, it's um, as long as you're prepared to do this and work hard, uh, uh, it, it's possible to expand your horizons, definitely. Hey, Adam, I still play. You've got a great uh, uh, ministry mix, really great ministry mix that I like to play when I'm DJ, when I'm wedding DJing. Yes. Uh, wow, uh, Shadow in Kansas City. I remember that. Is that where it was? I remember it. <clears throat> um, so here's that Zoom user. Am I just seeing that? Do you think bands should do shows? No, I don't. I, I mean, the problem is um, if, you, if you're an artist who excites a crowd, and if you're not, why not? Uh, I want to magnetize people closer 
not push them away. I want interaction. I want to sweat. If I'm not sweating behind the drums, what the fuck am I doing? I want to spit and, and pour water all over my drums and create obnoxious clouds of toxic uh, uh, virus. I want to punch the mirror ball and, and, uh, and bleed. Uh, so uh, I could see going out. No, I, I can't see going. I was going to say going out and doing maybe my pill event where I'm showing slides and talking. No, I actually can't see that because I want to meet the audience afterwards and sit around and sign everything and talk to everybody. Otherwise, what's the point? If I can't make that connection, this to show people how to screen print, to do free classes for touring. Like anybody who's an artist, you know, if somebody said, tours are on, oh, my internet connection went unstable again, that, that you would be straight in the van driving without even a fucking map. There's never been a better time to spend 10 weeks going through 600 pages in Tour Smart and learning how to do this better when you can. So you're more likely to succeed and less likely to fail. Okay, I'm kind of done. If anybody has any like, but I've got to ask you. Well, if you do have any questions, fucking follow me on Twitter, M-A-R-T-E-E-E-E-N, four E's, just like the old days. Ask me on Twitter. And I'm doing this again next week. And I'm doing, I've got two more, don't I? Mm -hmm. Well, what's my next one about? Art and entrepreneurship in the time, time of, of crisis. crisis. That's what we're doing. We're doing some cool shit right now. Um, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to stop. What am I going to do? Stop my video? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to once for having me. I got so many messages from people. I'll drive down. I'd love to say hi. I'm not in fucking Somerville. It's virtual. Nice to see you, Adam. Nice to see you, everyone. Hey, Angel. Holy shit. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye. Don't forget, martinatkins.com. Go download.